this is Jonathan here welcome to immortal engines this is my very first video I am a small engine overall mechanic I fix everything from generators to diesel truck uh, motorcycles my car uh, usually I only work on my stuff but anyway what this channel is all about is teaching you how to get these things going maybe you're out there camping ready to go you set up everything, you pull on that cord, and it doesn't go, I can probably help you with that. This right here is our very first project. It's an um, ETQ IN3500i. Yeah, not a very famous brand, but uh, I've done absolutely everything. I've done everything from generators like this that are probably Chinese uh, and generic uh, to Honda, Yamahas. Uh, I've, I've done uh, over 30 generators in the past year which was not on YouTube totally regret that but hey now I have the knowledge and now I feel comfortable enough to teach you what to do so that you can get these things going again so hopefully this channel and the videos in it are helpful to you if they are please make sure to subscribe leave a like leave a comment let me know how I can improve this channel and uh, let's get this going all right that's nice and close isn't it so let's see what we got here um this cover was right here a minute ago i can already see something missing the choke lever it's gone so um you know don't lose screws like this i like to throw them inside before you even do any of this uh double check uh what other people do meaning See my trusty little magnet. Um, what happens is uh, when I used to work at the small engine shop, the number one thing we would do, which I didn't do here, eh, good job trying to teach people on YouTube, don't even follow step one, um, is you get the generator, pull the cover, check your oil. Um, most of these generators have a fail safe system for low oil. If the oil is low, it will prevent the spark uh, from happening so it basically turns off um, the spark and no spark no running engine so this one has oil it actually looks pretty good which is surprising most of the time it's like charcoal in there um, so you check your oil first then you go ahead and you turn it on in all the places where it says on and you give it a few pulls try it maybe the other guy didn't have enough oil maybe the last guy didn't have enough gas maybe he didn't even know how to operate the on and off button and um gas on and off valve it happens i haven't actually gotten that yet but i do know it happens so before you tear into anything um go ahead and try to start it for a good couple minutes after you check the following things i just said well, this one, off camera, I already had tried. It's a no-go. So, what do I think is wrong with this guy? I think what's wrong with this guy is what's wrong with almost every generator I get. The ethanol in the gasoline goes bad. Goes really, really bad. After a few months, um, it collects moisture and it turns into this varnish-like material thingy that just clogs all the jets in the carburetor and and the carburetor doesn't doesn't spray gas and it doesn't start and if it does miraculously start it runs really well that is an eight millimeter so let's just throw all the bolts in here let's move this cover out of the way and let's move on. So I got this little um, cooking pot things, and that's where I like to throw my carburetors after I pull them from the engine. So let's go ahead and do that. Loosen up these gas clamps. Okay. You're gonna turn them to break them loose, and then you can slowly work them out. Did I just? Oh boy. 
Well, I guess I will pretend like that's not shot and we'll continue to pull this carburetor apart. I like to wear gloves. Good practice to use gloves. Uh, this stuff is terrible for your hands, so if you can keep it away, the better. But, you know, if it's your personal generator and it's not running and you need to fix it, doing it once don't matter. Just wash your hands thoroughly. Um, Alright, so let's pull this guy apart. Let's pull it out of here. Okay. Yeah, it don't look that bad. Well, we gotta, we gotta remove this motor so we can just disconnect the carburetor from the from the engine. There you go. So, important thing to notice. Um, this stepping motor, as you may be able to see here, uh, is uh, somewhat keyed. It's just not a round shaft. It's kind of like a rectangular shaft. Uh, it's got flat sides. And that's for a reason, because the throttle in here has the same shape. So, when you put this back together, uh, just don't go and jam it in there. Um, you know, kind of, kind of look at it and imagine to match this up. It has to match. Do not turn this. If you turn this, it will descalibrate or break the motor. And it's time to crack this open and clean it up. So let's get this going. Take that off. Then you want to pull this right here, this pin. And this is the float. And within the float is the needle valve. That guy. So you pull that off. And we're getting close. So inside of here, which you can't see, is the one of the jets, the high-speed jet. I'll show you how to get that off right now. I like to use see have this screwdriver right here that I grind it off because the it's a flathead and the, the sides were a little bit wide so I sharpened it a little bit and I made it a bit narrower so just for this job I really have to turn all the way I think it's close now so should be two separate pieces some generators have it in one piece yep two pieces so here's your jet, and I should know what this part is called, but I don't. So um, they seem they seem clean. This carburetor has definitely been clean not too long ago. Now step two. Remember this one? Yeah, don't forget about that one. You don't want to put the whole generator back together. And realize it hasn't been fixed so if you look right there let me point here if you look right there uh, that's a plastic screw by the way so kind of eyeball how far is sticking out on that side because that's what stops the throttle see that's a like a throttle stop there you go see you later now we're gonna try this thing out it's not a screw, so don't turn it. Just pry it out. Sometimes they're one, some are more stuck than others. This one's not bad. And there you go. Oh, almost done. I'll show you something else. And there's a little brass piece there. That's another jet. I'll show you how I test those. Um, and uh, usually I would remove this gasket right here. But, you know, this guy is not that dirty. The reason why you want to remove it, brake cleaner. This thing destroys anything that's made out of rubber. Start here. This is where the gas comes in. So gas goes in here from the hose, comes out of here. So maybe push the other way. Don't go crazy. See, that's good. And you want to spray this guy. See, came out the other side. That's good, that's what you want. There's a bunch of little holes on the other side. And that's where it's supposed to come out of. And do the other one. Oh, I see a lot of dirty guys. There you go. That cleared it up. Now 
probably spraying these guys right here. Uh, then you want to go up here. And these are the passages for the low speed, so you want to clean those up. You, know, you don't have to waste the whole can of brake cleaning like I used to. And um, yeah, this guy is really not bad. It took no time. So what I do right away is I grab a rag and I try to keep the o-ring dry because what happens is brake cleaner likes to expand rubber and uh, then you can't get the sucker in there if that does happen to you um, put it in the refrigerator for a little while maybe it'll shrink just enough to be able to put it in here so you can go ahead and try that but next we're gonna move on to this guys basically it has a bunch of little holes you want to Lock the one at the top, put your brake clean hose in the bottom, and you want to see brake clean spray in all directions. Try and not get it in your eyes, so kind of point away. Great, that went right in my mouth. This guy's clean. Put it on the table. Next, the jet. The main jet. That's what it's called. This guy is called the main jet. And you want to see it spray real good oh yeah and then last just maybe clean this bowl right here nothing crazy grab your rag just give it a wipe just wipe the float always be careful not to drop the needle uh, you really don't want to do that so I'm gonna insert this guy right here. I'm gonna grab the pin and I'm gonna slide it right back in there. There you go. Uh, next, I will slide this guy. So if you're wondering, it only goes in one way, so you can't mess it up. Just drop it in there. And then the jet, of course, the head of the screw pointing upwards or towards you go ahead and go ahead and put it on there hand tight nothing crazy all right next up oh we forgot to check this guy so you can put your mouth up to it and try and blow through here and see if you release air but what we can do is we can block one of the holes see there's two holes in the plastic bit you can block one of them insert your brake clean on the other and hopefully it comes out the top oh yeah it does so we'll put it right back in there and there you go now we're gonna put the screw back on remember the one I told you to remember how far it looked I certainly remember it's not life and death but the engine will run a different RPM whenever it wants to bump onto that if you don't set it like it was then it'll be off next we're ready for this cover right here so you can just start by putting it in any direction you feel like it today and then once it's in the generator you tighten it the rest of the way Right, this stuff is really really slippery because of the bad gas before we slide it in there we want to put the motor back in and then it will be almost ready 